So any cancer, irrespective of the organ, the diagnosis of cancer is basically what we call a histopathologic diagnosis. Other words, you're taking the biopsy tissue, you're preparing it, you're putting it on a slide, and then a pathologist is basically looking at it under a microscope, and he or she has basic criteria, depending upon, again, the organ, what constitutes cancer, what's normal, what's benign, what may be a gray zone. So for prostate cancer, the histopathologic features that define prostate cancer comes under what we call a grading, a, a Gleason grade, a Gleason score. And now there is a difference between a, a Gleason grade and a Gleason score. Gleason was a pathologist who basically defined what the histologic criteria should be for prostate cancer. And he assigned a Gleason grade or a Gleason pattern of one through five. One, which I've never seen in my entire life in terms of it being read out, is so close to normal, but he defined it as cancer. And again, there are some certain criteria that a pathologist would be better versed to address. But the Gleason, the Gleason grade or the Gleason pattern is a, score, is a system that goes from one through five. So one is cancer, but it's almost normal. Five is cancer, and it's very aggressive. So one is the best, five is the worst. And it's obviously you can have a one, two, three, four, and five. So the Gleason grade or the Gleason pattern is what the pathologist will basically assign to the biopsy. Now, prostate cancer is somewhat heterogeneous. So in the same biopsy, you can potentially have different patterns, different grades. So what most of the pathologists do is that they assign the two most common grades to come up with the Gleason score. So the score is the sum of the two most common patterns. So most, a lot of people will say, well, I have a Gleason 7 is my score. I personally tend to stay away from the summation only because if you think about a 7, there are a number of different ways you can get to 7 with a, with a grading scale of 1 through 5. It could be a 3 plus 4. It could be a 4 plus 3. Very rarely, it could be a 5 plus 2 or a 2 plus 5. So why that's important is because the first grade is the more prominent or most prevalent. So if you have a Gleason 3 plus 4, if you have one patient with a Gleason 3 plus 4 and another patient with a Gleason 4 plus 3, they're both 7s, but we actually look at those patients very differently. Because a 3 plus 4, the more common pattern, the more dominant pattern is a 3, which is a less aggressive pattern than a 4. So even though they're 7s, the 4 plus 3 is at a much higher risk than the gentleman with the 3 plus 4.